And uh, I would like to invite Dr. A.S. Kiripi. He is the professor of pediatrics at uh, SVRR, Government General, General Hospital, Tirupati, Andhra Pradesh. Sir, please, I would Thank like you. you to take over. Thank you, Dr. Boli, for your kind words. Thank you, sir. I am sharing my screen. So is is it is it visible? Yes. Sir. Yes, it is visible. What about my voice? Is it right? What about uh, my voice? Yes, sir, your voice is also fine. Thank you. Thank you. So good afternoon, all who are present in the uh, webinar. Today is my topic is neonatal shock. By hearing the word shock, don't be shocked. Because very it is simple. Very, very lucid, very uh, very easy to manage a neonatal shock. Okay, so let us see. So there is one case scenario I, I'm going to give to you. There is a five days old baby by name Davy. Weight is 2.2 kilograms. Is admitted in SNCU with the following um, symptomatology: with refusal of feeds, fast breathing, skin mottling cold extremities, poor peripheral pulses, capillary refill time of five seconds. So what do you think of, suppose if a case came with this uh, symptomatology, what do, you, what do you think of? You can chart in the chart box. What do you think of? Immediately by seeing this picture, what your mind will think of? So what is your facial diagnosis? It is nothing but shock. Very good. Very good. Okay. So what main objective of this class is at the end of this session, you're able to identify the shock, various types of shock, you're able to easily identify the shock and you can enumerate the various different causes of shock in your newborn and uh, how to give fluid resuscitation and when to use vasopressor, that is inotropes, and how to calculate the dose and how to give. These are things you will be familiar with all these things. So, so shock we can see everywhere because a, a sick neonatal can may present with shock. So, for example, just now we, we discussed about one case scenario. So, this sick newborn may present with shock or shock may appear during a course of the disease. So already baby admitted for some other cause, suppose for example, birth asphyxia or something, septicemia like that. So later on, child may develop shock during the course of the disease. These are the two conditions where we have to bear in mind. So how, the, how best we can manage the shock, it all depends on early diagnosis. Early diagnosis of the shock and prompt and appropriate management of the shock, we can save many lives. So by definition, what is shock? It is a poor perfusion of body tissues. It, in, it, the perfusion means the blood supply to the body tissues are hampered, decreased. So when once the perfusion is decreased and the tissues require more oxygen, no? So because of the perfusion decreased, oxygen supply to the tissues is decreased. And nutrients are not met because the nutrients to the cells will be uh, will be through blood supply. No, so there is blood supply is decreased. So nutrients also decrease at the same time. Metabolic components they, every day, every minute, uh, the metabolism will be occurring in the cells so that uh, that produce um, end products. Uh, uh, so those things also will will uh, will absorb by the blood. No, so those things also hampered. So that causes that results. So wherever there is a poor perfusion, oxygen demand will be more and nutrient nutrients to be uh, supplied to the tissues are decreased, result in tissue hypoxia. So once there is tissue hypoxia, metabolism will usually meta for metabolism, oxygen is required. So without oxygen, you will get anaerobic metabolism. That is without oxygen also, the metabolism will occur. So that is called anaerobic metabolism. The end products of that is lactic acid. So acid secretion will be more. So that's why 
child will suffer from metabolic acidosis. So once acidosis, metabolic acidosis is prolonged, that causes irreversible tissue damage. So, it, so a shock is a clinical state of poor perfusion of body tissue, which causes body demands of oxygen nutrients are not met and resulting in tissue hypoxia, metabolic acidosis, which leads to irreversible tissue damage. This is about the definition of the shock. So majority of times, many times we think a shock and hypotension are synonyms, but it is not so. So shock is different from hypotension. Hypotension is the late sign of shock. If you found the shock at the, uh, when the child is in hypotension, you are already gone. The child is already gone. So we, we miss the crucial time, precious time where we can reverse the shock. So we should not wait till the baby go to the hypotension. So hypotension is, uh, is there is one uh, on the column is there here. Okay, so by different various gestational is in the in the weeks. The mean blood pressure, it will change from the, so soon after delivery, the mean blood pressure at 23, 26 weeks are 22. Up, after three days, it will go up to 30. So for, for example, for term baby, 37 to 43 weeks, at birth, the mean blood pressure is 42 and it will reach uh, at 72 hours at 50. Okay. So Usually mean arterial pressure is roughly equal to gestation, whatever may be the gestation. Suppose if a gestation is uh, 28 weeks, mean arterial pressure is 28. Um, gestation is 37, mean arterial pressure is 37. Like that you can remember easily. So what are the various types of shock? So most common type of shock is hypovolemic shock. So here there will be either blood loss or fluid loss. So blood loss is due to Fetal metal hemorrhage or twin to twin transfusion. So, suppose there is twins, are there? We can see one baby is very, very plethoric, red in color, pink in color, whereas the other baby pale, almost white in color, pale. So, it, that's, if the difference is there, then you can say it is twin to twin transfusion. So, a child will have, suppose, in a birth trauma during the delivery, any trauma during delivery that causes his severe blood loss and uh, disseminate intravascular coagulation and pulmonary hemorrhage, intraventricular hemorrhage. These are the conditions where we'll expect blood loss that leads to hypovolemic shock. Suppose there is a fluid loss, it is due to excessive insensible water loss, poor fluid intake, that maybe baby is not accepting breastfeeds, and vomiting, persistent vomiting, and diarrhea, persistent diarrhea, and maybe polyuria, increased urination or any renal loss, pathological renal, any renal disease, kidney disease are there, that may be leads to loss, renal loss of water. So these are the two conditions that is blood, either blood loss or fluid loss will get hypovolemic shock. This is one type of shock. And second most common uh, cause of shock is cardiogenic shock. It is due to low cardiac output due to birth asphyxia. So in birth asphyxia, there will be myocardium will be depressed. So heart unable to pump the blood because of uh, decreased blood supply to the heart muscle or any congenital heart disease will get cardiogenic shock and any arrhythmias that means abnormal beating pattern of the heart or any hypoglycemia, decreased blood sugar level, acidosis, sepsis. These are the various conditions where you can anticipate cardiogenic shock. And third is obstructive shock. The obstructive shock is the the uh, left ventricle outflow, uh, it is obstructed. Either so, heart uh, heart is functioning is normal, but the amount the blood amount of blood that is ejecting from the um, heart is obstructed by some of the conditions. Like for example, aortic stenosis, coarctation of aorta, tension pneumothorax, pericardial tamperin, and uh, these are the causes for obstructive shock. Or uh, sometimes, if suppose if a child is on a ventilator. 
if you give the more people PEEP, P index predatory one predator. So if you, if you give more P, so so that the all lungs will be expanded. Hyperinflation of lungs can occur. That compresses the inferior vena cava. They, they compresses the uh, venous return to the heart. So thereby, there also that one uh, you will get the obstructive shock. This is iatrogenic sometimes. And another another type of shock is distributive shock. Distributive shock means it is due to either sepsis or anaphylaxis or neurological analysis that is loss of sympathetic gastric tone and drugs. Distributive shock, it is afterload is decreased. That means all blood vessels are dilated, capillaries are dilated, venous, I mean, arterials are dilated. So most cases of the blood in the vascular compartment that is called distributive shock is commonly seen in sepsis and anaphylaxis. So though we mentioned the three or four types of shock, whereas in newborn, usually the presentation will be mixed type of shock. It may be a mixture of hypovolemic, cardiogenic and distributive, like that, a mixed type of shock usually seen in uh, newborn period. Okay. Uh, next, uh, we see, uh, you already just now we explained, you can you can see in these uh, types of shock, so cardiogenic shock you have seen sepsis and distributive shock has seen sepsis. So uh, sepsis is the most common type of shock. It has multiple etiologies. It is maybe hypovolemia. It may be distributed to decrease the after load. It may be cardiogenic due to myocardial depression or endotoxins release. So these are the so septic shock is multiple etiologies. Is the most common type of shock in. Um, preterm babies and all that. So how to identify the shock? So early signs of shock in newborn period is unexplained tachycardia, that is more than 160 per minute. So tachycardia, the cause of tachycardia may be some, many, many causes, but here the cause we cannot able to identify without any knowing the cause, child is having tachycardia, then you think of, you th uh, high index of suspicion should be there to say it is early sign of shock, unexplained shock. Why heart rate will increase? Actually, blood pressure depends on the systemic vascular resistance into cardiac output. Systemic vascular resistance means the afterload. That means uh, the blood um, from the heart, the arteries, uh, arteries, the resistance in the arteries side will be more systemic vascular resistance. That's called cardiac output is the heart that is pumped for the minute for minute. And so cardiac output depends on stroke volume into heart rate, stroke volume into heart rate. Stroke volume means the blood that is ejected from the heart from each beat, that is stroke volume. So stroke volume into heart rate, then it, it, it is equal to cardiac output. So suppose if to maintain the cardiac output, that there should be stroke volume should be uh, should be adequate and heart rate should be adequate. So in a newborn period, the heart muscle is not so effective. So we cannot increase the stroke volume of the newborn baby. So what will happen? The nature by nature. So in order to maintain the cardiac output, heart rate will increase. Heart rate will increase. So that's why. This is the first early sign of shock is heart rate. So once heart rate is increased, this is a compensatory mechanism. Once heart rate is increased, cardiac output will be maintained for a certain time. So that's why unexplained tachycardia is the earliest sign and prolonged capillary refill time, more than three seconds, you should think of shock. These are the signs you have to bear in mind. And what is the late sign of the shock? It is the hypotension. So fall in blood pressure, is less than third percentile. It is a sign of late shock, a sign, late sign of shock. Okay. And now we'll see what is capillary refill time. All of you know, but for your completion sake, I'm showing this video. See, so we have to... By five seconds of pressure on the sternum. Here, this is normal at around two seconds. So we have to check the capillary refill time over this chest, usually most common site will be over the chest. 
and we can also we can check the capillary filling time over the forehead also but preferably over the chest now over the sternum so we have to apply three to five second pressure for the three to five seconds so that causes blanching of blanching so soon after re removing the finger the blanch will become refills with the blood how much time it will take to refill it is nothing but capillary filling time it usually less than three seconds in normal newborn. If prolonged more than three seconds, then it indicates poor circulation and poor tissue perfusion. But uh, sometimes in hypothermic babies also we'll have, we cannot delay. Suppose child is in hypothermia, we cannot rely on the capillary filling time. Okay. Next, what are the other one is we have seen unexplained tachycardia, second one is capillary filling time, more than three seconds. Other clinical features of shock are weak or poor peripheral pulses. If you find it is very difficult to locate the peripheral pulses, that is means radial and postural pulsations. And uh, in child will be pale and mottling of the skin. That is a reticular pattern of the mottling of the skin will be seen and cold extremities. Extremities will be cool when compared to the trunk. And decrease urine output. Urine output, you see the urine output, air urine output will be decreased. And child will be lethargic, abundation. That is, child will be dull looking. And if you it is low blood pressure, this is a late sign, low blood pressure. This is the order of occurrence of the signs in shock. So, so low blood pressure is a late sign of shock, and mottled skin and prolonged CRT can be seen in hypothermia. Hence, one must rule out hypothermia. So Whenever you found the, you, whenever you find my modeling of the skin and uh, prolonged C CFT, check the temperature. If temperature is normal, the ambient temperature is good. The child is in under warmer. If you have under warmer, if you found tachycardia and capillary filling prolonged, then you think of shock. Otherwise, you, you have to rule out hypothermia first. And how to manage? So now we are able to find, you're able to recognize the shock and you know the various types of shock. Now, how to manage shock? So most majority of times you can start with a supportive management like maintain TABC. What is T? T stands for temperature, A stands for airway, B stands for breathing, and C stands for circulation. So we have to maintain TABC. So put under the warmer, check the whether airway is uh, patent and uh, you connect to the oxygen and any um, uh, you have to get this vascular access and uh, proceed for the further management suppose if you if, if there is a hypoxia so uh, how to know the hypoxia by pulse oximeter you uh, check the whether pulse oximeter is in between saturation is in between 91 to 95 percent if it is less then you can give oxygen, supplement the oxygen. Check the blood glucose level. If it is more than 45, you have to maintain the blood sugar level more than 45. If it is less, we have to give um, glucose bolus. Maintain euthermia. That is, the temperature should be 36.5 to 37.5. Check the whether skin probe is attached to the baby or not. This is hypothermia. So, supportive management that indicates maintain TABC. Hypoxia is there, you connect to the oxygen. Hypoglycemia is give up. glucose. Hypothermia is put under warmer and, uh, and maintain the temperature between 36.5 to 37.5. Now, what is the specific management in the shock? The specific management, first step is restoration of the perfusion by fluid resuscitation. What type of fluid will give normal saline? How much 10 ml per kg? How long? 20 to 30 minutes. So, normal saline, 10 ml per kg, 20 to 30 minutes time. That is the first bolus. So, what are the, when, when do you say child is improving from the shock? So, previously, uh, capillary filling time is more than 3 seconds. Now, it is below 3 seconds. And heart rate previously is 160 per, more than 160. Now, it is a drop in the uh, heart rate in 10. 10 beats per minute. So 10 beats per minute drop, drop then it is signs of improvement. And uh, is check the pulse volume or the um, uh, or the weight vessels. That is um, 
um, large vessels that is femorals or brachials femorals we have to check when we put your hand like this uh, on the thighs in mid midpoint of the thigh you can see the femoral pulsation or for brachials medial side of the arm you have to see a pulsation that is brachial pulse and that that you, that you can you can assess the volume pulse volume and check the urine output that is over the next four to six hours is the sign of improvement immediately we cannot say whether but after four to six hours of shock i mean during, i mean during treatment of the shock if child passes urine then it is a good sign for the improvement if there is no improvement or partial improvement that means persistent tachycardia no fall of 10 beats per minute and capillary filling time persistently about three seconds, then you can repeat the bolus, fluid bolus again, second bolus you can give, same 10 ml per kg for 20 to 30 minutes, second bolus. So, so fluid resuscitation is this part. And when to start inotropes, that is vasopressors, when to start? So if signs of poor perfusion, persisting despite two fluid balls, that is after two fluid balls also, signs of perfusion that, you, that is uh, tachycardia, persistent tachycardia, capillary filling time prolonged three, more than three seconds, then that is the time to start inotropes. So after two fluid balls, if there is no improvement, we can start inotropes. So after start, uh, after that, uh, you, you should not mean that, uh, should not discontinue support taker. We have to sub give support, that is maintain TABC, check the hypoglycemia, check the hypoxemia. Those are things uh, we have to check. We have to continue. We have to continue support to care. And the, if you found any underlying cause, suppose of hypothermia or some other infection, so underlying causes should be treated appropriately. So, what is the most common type of uh, inotropes you can try, uh, start in new, newborn period in SNCU? That is dopamine. It is the first line of agent in shock after, that is, that means fluid refractive shock. If you decide to start vasopressor, that is, the dopamine is the first line of agent for your, as far as SNCU is concerned. So, how much dopamine you have to give? Starting dose is 5 to 10 micrograms per kg per minute. 5 to 10 micrograms per kg per minute. So how to calculate the drip? I will, I will tell the how to calculate drip and all that. So starting dose is 5 to 10 micrograms per kg per minute. That means usually you used to start with 10 micrograms per minute, per kg per minute. If there is no improvement, then you can uh, increase every five, uh, in, increase in the increments of 5 micrograms per kg per minute. That means you can start with uh, 10 micrograms, 10 micrograms per kg. Then after 20 to 30 minutes, you can, uh, if there is no improvement, you go 15, no improvement, then you go up to 20, like this, uh, 10, 15, 20, like that, you can increase the dopamine. So how to calculate how to um, dopamine drip? That means 1 ml of dopamine contains 40 milligrams of, um, 1 ml of a vial that the solution contains 40 milligrams of dopamine, dopamine injection. Yeah, all of you know, I think so. So if suppose if baby is 2.5 kilograms, uh, 2.5 kilograms, and well, so what is starting dose of dopamine? I told you 10 micrograms per kg per minute. 10 micrograms per kg. So, so 2.5 milligrams, so that is the weight. And dose is 10 micrograms. 10 micrograms per kg means 2.5. So per minute, how much it comes? 25 micrograms per minute. Okay, this is a dose. Suppose if you calculate for one hour, that means one, one hour contains 60 minutes. So you multiply with 60. It comes to 1500 micrograms per hour. This is per hour. So if you calculate for one day, so one day requirement of dopamine, that means, so how many hours in, in a day? That is 24 hours. You can you multiply this amount with a 24. That comes to 36,000 micrograms per day. Okay, 30, so one micro, uh, one gram is equal, one milligram is equal to 1,000 micrograms. So you divide by 1,000. So it is, it is, it is 336,000 micrograms. If you convert it to milligrams, 
by dividing 1000, it goes to 36 milligrams per day. 36 milligrams per day. That means one ml contains 40 mg. 36 milligrams contains, that means 36 by 40, it, it comes around 0 0.9 ml. So the requirement of the dopamine for 24 hours is 36 milligrams, that is 0 0.9 ml, 0 0.9 ml. Suppose, so suppose if you are having infusion pump, you can calculate for 24 hours and you connect to the infusion pump, you start the dose. That is one ml per kg equal to uh, this thing. Suppose if you are not having infusion pump, then you can add the dopamine into a uh, daily maintenance fluid. So daily maintenance fluid, so you are dividing into eight hours, you know, every shift you can, uh, you can change the infusion, I mean, maintenance fluid. No? So in every shift, you can add 0 0.3 ml, that means 12 milligrams. That means 24 hours, 36 milligrams. So three shifts means each shift 12 milligrams. So each shift you can add dopamine in the maintenance fluid. So simple formula is, you need not calculate all these things. You can remember this, this formula. It is dose, that is 10 micrograms, 15 micrograms, 20 micrograms, that is dose. And weight, the weight of the weight, 2.5 kg, that dose. And you multiply by, multiply with 1.44. So if you multiply 1.44, weight of the baby with the dose, then it is equal to milligrams of dopamine. So suppose for example, dose is 10 micrograms, weight is 2.5. So 10 into 2.5 is 25 into 1.44, it, it comes to 36 milligrams. So you can, you can try the calculation. So it's a very simple formula. You can remember dose into weight into 1.44 is equal to milligrams of dopamine. So how to uh, run the dopamine? So uh, we calculated 0 0.9 ml of dopamine required for this baby. So we can add in 24 ml of fluid. Why 24 ml? So we have to give um, uh, per hour, no, 10, 1 ml per hour. So we have to give 1 ml per hour. We have calculated 24, 24 hours, nine, 0 0.9 ml, but we have to give 1 ml per hour. That means 1 ml per hour is equal to 10 microns per kg per meter. So uh, one day contains 24 hours, no? So that's why. Yeah, you add this 0 0.9 ml in 24 ml of fluid. If you add in 24 ml of fluid, then it comes to, if you start the infusion pump, one ml per hour, it is equal to 10 microns per kg per meter. If you increase 1.5 ml per hour, then it comes to 15 micrograms per kg. If you increase to 2 ml per hour, it is equal to 20 microns per kg per meter. Very simple, okay? Any doubts you can uh, you can ask at the end or you can type in the chest in the chat box. If infusion, I already told you if infusion pump is not available, then add 12 milligrams. That is three shifts. Previously it is 0 0.9 ml. Now three shifts from each shift 0 0.3 ml. 0 0.3 into three shift is 0 0.9 ml total. So each shift that is 0 0.3 ml, that is 0 0.3 ml of dopamine. You can, in eight hours maintenance fluid, you can run the rate, decide maintenance. Uh, you can run the uh, dopamine trip. So what are the things you have to monitor during the inotrope dopamine infusion? So we have to check capillary refilling time and pulse volume in the femorals as well as in the brachials to assess the perfusion, whether perfusion is good or not. And suppose if it is the NIPP is there in your SNC. I think most of the SNCs are having NIPP and we can monitor the blood pressure. And we have to assess once in 20 to 30 minutes. Once in 20 minutes or 30 minutes, we have to monitor these things. Capillary refilling time, pulse volume and BP. If there is no response after 20 minutes of starting 10 mics per minute, then you can increase the dopamine to 15 mics. That is, we, I already told you every time 5 mics per kg, you can increase. So now we are going to 15 max. Previously, 10 max per minute, what is the different rate of infusion of the one ml per hour? Now we increase it to 15 max. That means 1.5 ml per hour. Still there is no response. Then you can increase up to 2 ml per hour. That means 20 micrograms. I already upper limit of the dopamine dose is 20 micrograms per kg per minute. So you can go up to 2 ml per hour in infusion pump. So suppose 
if child is uh, if you found the if you found improvement in the baby the uh, then the, you have to decrease the infusion rate the same same 5 micro previously it is uh, 20 max per kg now it is reduced to 15 max then 10 max that means in suppose in the in, in language of the infusion pump now it is 2 ml per kg, uh, 2 ml per hour now you decrease to um, 1.5 ml per hour wait for 20 to 30 minutes check the all signs of improvement still uh, signs of improvement is there then you reduce infusion we have to allow the uh, uh, the dopamine to act for wait for 30, 20 to 30 minutes for reassessment if this, despite dopamine that is a uh, child uh, child uh, we increase the dopamine to up to 20 max per kg but there is no improvement in the shock still capillary filling time prolonged pulse volume is slow then you can add dopamine at that juncture uh, for you i can add the dopamine at this juncture if the dosage is similar to the dopamine same thing 10 max 15 max 20 max so you can start with 5 to 10 max you can increase every five, uh, every 15 to 20, 20 to 30 minutes. There is no response. Then you go for 15. No response. You go to up to 20. If style is improved, then you can reduce five max per minute. Think same thing. And so, what is the advantage of the dopamine? Dope it improves the cardiac output. The increase the cardiac output and as well as it decreases the vascular resistance. That is, it reduces afterload. It vascular resistance. So usually in the in a new, new neonatal period, new one uh, in a use, we used to give combination of dopamine and dopamine to improve the cardiac output. So, dopamine first we start with the 20, you will go up to 20 max, then you can add dopamine, you continue up to 20, like you can go up to 20. So, a combination you can use. So, it is also use the dopamine also decrease the preclassical resistance in asphyxia. So, because I told you asphyxia, myocardial contact will be decreased. So, if you, if child, if if you find if you found the shock in uh, birth asphyxia case, first line of inotropy is dopamine. Other than that, sepsis and all that, the dopamine is the first line of inotropy. So, here what is difference between dopamine and dopamine? So, dopamine is one ml contains forty milligrams. Dopamine one ml contains fifty milligrams. That is the only difference. But rest of the formulas and uh, calculation of the drip rate, everything is similar to the dopamine. So when to use steroid? When to start steroids? Suppose baby is not responding to the maximum dose of dopamine, dopamine, then you can give steroids twenty mics per kg per minute. But for as far as essence is concerned, you think uh, you uh, confined to this statement. But in advance, but it means slight difference is there. And uh, suppose if you uh, uh, anticipate sepsis, you can uh, in sepsis shock. So uh, soon after um, dose of the uh, dopamine, you can start early steroids also. You can start sometime. But as far as essence is concerned, you remember uh, if child is not responding with the 20 max of both the dopamine and dopamine, then you think of steroid. What steroid you have to give? Hydrocortisone. How much you have to give? 1 milligram per kg at the initial dose. Assess once in six, eight, 6 to 8 hours. So every 6 hours or 8 hours you have to assess. Depending on the response, you can give 1 milligram per kg per dose every 8 to 12 hours for 2 to 3 days. Okay. So first dose, 1 milligram per kg. Assess after 6 to 8 hours. Child is uh, not improving, then you go for 8th eight, hourly or 12th hourly for 2 to 3 days. So, mind you, it is after inotrope. That is, first is fluid refractory. That is, no response with fluids, boluses, 2 bolus of fluid bolus. You start dopamine. You can increase up to 20 mics of dopamine. No response, then you go for dopamine. Dopamine also up to, from start from 10 to 20, you can go up to 20. Then there is no response. Then you start hydrocortisone one milligram per kg. Okay, like that.
So suppose if baby is less than 35 weeks, 35 weeks, you can give hydrocortin 8th only or 12th only. Suppose if baby is above 35 weeks, then you can give 6th only or 8th only hydrocortin. Okay. So what is unresponsive shock? So you so in in spite of all these measures, child is not responding. That means we have to think of either either hypoglycemia is seen, is check the blood sugar, either hypoxia, check the saturation, and hypothermia, check the temperature, hyperkalemia, check the electrolytes, potassium levels. Uh, potassium levels may be high. Uh, and the renal, like the renal, para, renal failure, uh, acute kidney injury, injuries. Our child is anemic. That there is, a, even though if um, they, we are giving so much of oxygen, uh, so much of uh, perfusion, we are maintaining perfusion, still, child is not as one means that is anemia. Hemoglobin level is very low. So, oxygen carrying capacity is low. So, the blood is not having such a carrying capacity of oxygen. Even though we are improving the perfusion, the at the tissue level, child uh, tissues will suffer from hypoxia. That is, oxygen level is very less. So it is it's unless you improve the blood hemoglobin level, the child may not respond with your general routine measures of the shock. And severe sepsis throughout. That's why in severe sepsis also, it is uh, no response unless you treat the sepsis. That's why you start with the uh, steroids as well as the antibiotics immediately whenever you suspect sepsis and pneumothorax. Pneumothorax, I already told you, uh, pneumothorax and cardiac tamponade, you will get obstructive component also will be there. So it may be hypovolemic shock initially, but because of pneumothorax or septicemia or uh, uh, hypo, hypovolemic shock, so in, because of presence of pneumothorax and cardiac tamponade, child may not respond. So if they, if you found pneumothorax, so very simple, in the newborn cradle, you uh, switch off the all lights, you put a warm light on the uh, either side of the chest, you can see translucency test. If you found the pneumothorax, immediately you have to drain the pneumothorax and cardiac tamponade. That is collection of the blood in the pericardial sac. So if you found the hemoglobin is less than 12, milli, 12 grams per cent, then you immediately arrange for the blood transition so that the oxygen carrying capacity will be increased. Suppose the, in spite of uh, um, all these measures, child is not improving, then you can refer that case to the higher center and um, stabilize with the temperatures. Should, child should not be in hypothermia. Child should not be in the hypoxemia. So you connect to the oxygen and kind of put under warmer and check the blood glucose level. If hypoglycemia, treat the hypoglycemia. So once it is stabilized with these three measures, then you can refer the case to the uh, higher center where NICU facilities are available. What are the therapeutic endpoints? That means uh, when you say your treatment, child is responding with your treatment. That means capital filling time is less than three seconds. Heart rate become normal. Pulses become normal. Pulse volume will become normal. And uh, extremities are warmth. That is previously peripheries are cool. Now it is peripheries are warmth. And blood pressure is normal. Urine output is more than one ml per kg per hour. These are the therapeutic endpoints. Therapeutic endpoints. Next. When do you wean, wean off the inotrope? Because we have started inotrope. Because of inotrope, child responded well. So child is, um, baby uh, reach the therapeutic endpoints. Now, when how to how to wean off, how to uh, did, uh, decrease the inotrope dose, and how to uh, omit the inotrope. That is how to withdraw the inotrope. Once hypotension improves, that is blood pressure for four to six hours maintain normally. Then tissue perfusion improves. That is capillary filling time normally normal. Then we think of the withdrawal or tapering of the inotrope that is slowly reducing the inotrope. So hypotension and capillary filling time that is tissue perfusion, signs of tissue perfusion improves and maintains for four to six hours. Then you think of decreasing of the dosage of the inotrope 
you can reduce the drip. I already told you every, for increment also five max per min per kg per minute every one hour two hours sleep. Or for decrease also we can decrease the here the uh, time is previously is 20 to 30 minutes. Now here for decrease uh, decrement that tapering those every one to two hours. Every hourly you can reduce or two hours or once in two hours you can reduce five max per kg per minute. And uh, so I, I told you the blood pressure should be more than 98% at any point of time and baby stable at least six to eight hours after inotrope initiation. And uh, so I already every time uh, we can reduce dopamine or dop uh, dopamine or dobitamin in five mics per kg per minute each. So suppose if child is in adrenal, uh, we can reduce 0.3 mics per kg per minute. So suppose child is on dopamine, dobitamin, adrenaline. First we will start dopamine, dobitamin, then we start adrenaline. So three inotropes are there. Then what we have to taper first? Last which is added, we have to taper first. That means suppose if we added last adrenal, first you can reduce the adrenal first and tap it you know, gradually and vomit. That is, you can remove. Then you start with the dopamine. Tap it gradually, 5 mics per kg per minute. Then you can vomit. Then you go for dopamine. Gradually tap it, then vomit. So when to refer, if child, newborn as unresponsive, unresponsive to your treatment, then you can refer urgently. And what to do if referral is not possible? Suppose, uh, Referral is not possible, where a child is in a remote place, uh, ambulance facility is not there, transport incubator is not there. Then, uh, so if you send that baby in between the uh, transit time, transit, child, you may lose the baby. So in such condition, referral is not possible. In such condition, you have to continue anotropes and you can add adrenaline here. So previously you have started dopamine, dopamine, no? So now, if a child is unable to send to the higher center, child is still in shock, then you can give adrenaline, that is epinephrine or adrenaline, 0.2 micrograms per kg per minute, 0.2 micrograms per kg per minute. So you can, uh, after starting the adrenaline, you assess after 20 to 30 minutes. If there is no response, increase the adrenaline 0.1 microgram per kg per minute till you reach 1 microgram per kg per minute. So it's very easy, adrenaline 0.2 micrograms, you can start. You can increase every 0.1 microgram till it reaches the one microgram per kg per meter. So during this period also, you have to continue the support to that is TABC, hypoxemia, hypo, hypothermia, you have to check out, check, and uh, we have to think of any hypoglycemia also. These are the support to we have to continue. So this is the monitoring chart. I think it is there in the SNCU manual and the FBNC manual. So where the pad, first column is uh, uh, here, time. That is at admission, at two hours, four hours, six hours, eight hours, like that. This is hours we had mentioned. And here, these parameters are temperature, we have to monitor, heart rate, respirate rate, SP water, the saturation, capital refill time, mean blood pressure and urine output eighth hour you have to mention and down is score it, in a term uh, respiratory cell, you can put down is score living score it is uh, hie scoring and blood glucose you have to mention serum electrolytes and serum calcium blood urea and creatine these are things this is the monitoring chart in shaw so what are the key messages so monitor all sick newborns for early signs of shock. So whatever may be the baby admitted for uh, for some other cause also, you have to check for early signs of shock. That what are the early signs of shock? Unexplained tachycardia, capillary refilling. These are things, these are two things constantly you have to monitor in all sick babies. Anytime child may go to shock. Once you identify the shock, start treatment immediately and give supportive care that is TABC 
hypo, uh, hypoxemia, hypoglycemia, and hypothermia. These are three things you have to think of. You have to see supportive care. And uh, after giving supporting care, immediately you start fluid uh, resuscitation, that is normal saline, normal saline, um, fluid bolus, and I know for the first, first bolus, check, and second bolus, if there is no response, you start inotrope, that is dopamine. Uh, you can start with 10 mics, gradually to, uh, increase 5 microns uh, uh, every 20 to 30 minutes till you reach the 20 mics. If there is no response, you start dopamine, start with 10 mics. After 20 to 30 minutes of resistance, you are 20 to 30 minutes, once in 20 to 30 minutes, increase to 15. Again, check, you go up to, you can go up to 20 mics. Then there is um, and there is no response with the two inotropes. Then you think of uh, you start hydrocortisone. It um, you can start initially. You can assess how to eight hours. There is uh, no response. You can go eight to eight hourly or twelve hourly uh, for two to three days. If uh, this is the time to send the baby to the higher center. So after starting the hydrocortisone, if the child is not responding first dose initial dose, you can plan for shifting of the baby. So if it is unable to shift the baby, then you consider uh, adrenaline here, adrenaline. You can start with 0 0.1 microgram, then gradually you can increase and till you get the one microgram per kg. If there is improvement, therapeutic endpoints I already told. So you can gradually decrease the inotropes. Last one which added, we have to tamper first and gradually until uh, the last thing to tamper is the dopamine. Okay, uh, so this is this is about uh, shock in the newborn, and in your facility you can yourself you can assess whether you are going in right way or not for um, for monitoring purpose quality quality improvement in your facility. You, you can you can assess yourself that is how many babies developing shock during the hospital stay and how many babies requiring inotrope support and how many babies successfully managed for shock and how many babies referred for management of shock. So if you post these four questions to yourself and you can improve the quality uh, care in your facility. Thank you, Dr. Aboli. I completed. Uh, thank you so much, sir. For